How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I wanted to have a, a discussion today about black wealth, about the reality of black wealth in context of American, uh, the overall American economy. Um, one of my observations is that it's very clear that most, most and meaning a large number of African Americans really don't have a context of race and really the reality of what race has meant historically and how it impacts our lives today in terms of our overall like wealth level. And without that understanding, you really can't operate in this system because you can't demand change, you can't demand anything until you know where you actually like are and where you stand financially. You know, we always talk about financial literacy, but we're using it incorrectly. We're talking about financial literacy in terms of learning the tools that white people use to grow their money, stocks, bonds, things of the sort. But we don't want to learn the reality of the financial landscape. And that's what I kind of want to do with this video. I don't want to go too long. This is kind of a short video here today, this weekend. And I just kind of want to explain things from a numerical standpoint. Before we start, please go to ToneTalks.org. That's where you can donate. You can see all my articles I write on inequality.org, on the GRIO, on, you know, Huffington Post, so many different, in your web, so many different little sites uh, all around the web. And uh, check out those articles there. You can check out my older videos. You can also donate through PayPal on that Tone Talks, T-O-N-E-T-A-L-K-S.org. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Tone Talks is the name of the YouTube channel. You can just Google that. So getting right into it, one of the ways that I want to frame this just before we get into the context of everything is when you look at American history, you have to understand that African Americans as a group have not been that free to be part of the economic like, like marketplace until very rather recently, like a singular lifetime. America's uh, the wealthiest country in the history of the world by far, produced half if not more than half of the richest people ever. And we basically were allowed to be free over a short period of time. I'm going to pull up a chart right now so you can kind of see that. If you look at America across like four quadrants of 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900, and then these, these 17 years of 2000s, what you find is the reality is we weren't really allowed to be part of the marketplace until well into the 60s and the 70s. And basically, we were used as tools to grow other people's wealth up until that point in one way or another through whether it be uh, actual slavery or slavery by another name, peonage and things of the sort, you know, we weren't really allowed to be free until Juneteenth. And so many of us don't understand that. We think we were freed since 1880, 1890, and it's just not true. And even during Jim Crow, we were shut out of wealth. And I think in many ways, you know, that shows up in our wealth level today. Now, the problem isn't just our wealth level. It's that we we basically compartmentalized our wealth level as though it's growing, not shrinking one, which is wrong. And then as though, um, we have some kind of personal like power over the change, not government needs to change things. And that's not true either. The reality is, you know, there's an article, right. That, that I like for you guys to pull up that says that, you know, the top 10% of white people own almost everything. And it, it, it only tells like part of the narrative in that title because the reality is that the real title should be like white people own almost everything in America. And that's just the truth. And, and I think part of what makes this hard to see is the, the advent of the new kind of television. And that new kind of television pushes a narrative about diversity that wealth doesn't hold up to. It pushes a narrative that wealth is even, that wealth is, is something that everybody has access to and that it's, it's something that if you just try hard, everybody can get a chance. And it's just not true. You know, when you look at wealth in America, you know, what, I, what, what, what you really find is that, you know, black people largely are locked out of wealth in this country. Now, unlike other groups, whether it be Latinos or different gr groups of Asians, what we don't have is a home country. So this is all, this is it. This is our, this is the game for us. When you look at this thing, across across a spectrum of of who has the wealth there's 80 million white homes there's 14 million black homes of the 80 million white homes 8 million 10 percent have 75 percent of all the wealth in this country and it's growing we're living through a time of calcification of wealth these charts that i show is the last data they've released since 2013 2014 it's actually worse now 
but we'll use these as the baseline, but it's worse than this now. So like what you find is that the top 10% or top 8 million white households have a million four or more. Two, four, six million dollars, sometimes 12, 20, 30 million dollars. Eight million house white households have that kind of wealth. And everything from, you know, from ranching and farming to military contracts to liquor stores to everything. Everything you can think of. And I, I think that in many ways we recreate a narrative as though we're a section of that top group when actually we're a negligible sample. We're sample negligible in that group. We're not in that group. Now, what you find is that that group kind of sets a narrative for America to say like, well, everybody's kind of cut out and it's just still not true. One, because you get, because if you're white, you get to look like that group and traffic on the fact that people have to figure out whether you have money or not. The anonymity of wealth versus what black people go through, which is that people presume you don't have money because of the group's overall financial state. And then you got to prove that you have money, which, which people, you know, end up having microaggressions and things of the sort microaggressions being little frustrations with what race means. And started dealing with the overall context of what race means because they were sold a bag of goods of diversity. And that's how they frame their, their whole psyche is based on something that's just incorrect by every sense of the financial data. So moving, moving along, which, which, what you find is that the next, so if you were to look at America across, take all the families across a hundred percentiles. So like, you know, the 50th percentile is the key because the bottom 50, from the 50th percentile family to the 90th percentile family, that section, that section of American families has about 25% of the wealth, percent of the wealth. But we're really not part of that group either, African Americans. Now, we're a very small part, small section. We're maybe about 2% of that, of that 25%. Our whole race, our, almost our whole race is in the bottom 50th percent and not even at the top level of that bottom 50%. You know, I've shown you that the middle black family is worth $1,700. And I don't think that you really grasp what that means in terms of like how crazed we are in terms of the dreams we have versus the wealth level we have. I don't think that you're really digesting how this, what this means for black families that are under, say, the age of 40, 45. Because basically the small group that is in the, in the 50th to 90th percentile are mostly all boomers. This isn't like young blacks. Young blacks have been cut out of the American dream. And so like when, when, I, when I start to say this, I'm going to lay it out in data. I'm pulling up a chart that shows you to get in the top 50% of America, the ticket in is, in, is about eighty-five dollars to $100,000 in worth. In worth. Not earnings, not income, worth. The middle black family is worth $1,700 though. There's only... So, so if you look at this thing in terms of like numerics, there's 14 million black homes. That's it. There's 40 million blacks. We live in 14 million homes. There's about 180 million whites and they live in 80 million homes. 8 million of their 80 own almost everything, like 75% of the pie. So for us, of the 14 million black homes, only 2 million are above the 50% like mark line. That's it. That is all. Just 2 million black homes are above the 50% mark line. Almost our whole race is in the bottom half of America. The part that only owns 1% of the wealth in this country. The black race is largely made up of black people that don't have any money. Now, what, what's a trip is that black people have not really digested that and adjusted their habits, their demands, or anything because they really believe that they have the means that white people have. They also believe that there's this large section of white people that are just like them. And what you find is that, that we really don't understand, one, that we're a flat race economically. Pulling up another chart, you see what I mean. Like if you look across this chart, what we are is we're flat across the whole race in terms of our wealth level with a slight tier as you get up to about the, the, the 90th percentile. And also, 
those people in that slight uptick are all boomers. They're not young, family-aged people. Our race, 12 million families, literally own probably less than a quarter of a percent of all the wealth in this country, but have just the same dreams of Stanford and UCLA as though we have a share much larger. And so, like, what I, what I, what I believe... Is, is that when when television, when media started really projecting like this idea of diversity, they also had a group of blacks that came from the top, say about 300 to 500,000 black households out of a large section, millions of black, that said, I want to see a positive image of black families. But when they said they want to see a positive image, what they really started showing is aberration. Basically anomalies. When you say blackish, when you show empire, what I'm telling you right now is that's not, it's not the middle family, it's not the top 10% family, it's not even the top 1% family. A lot of those families are the top 0.1% of all black America. What I'm telling you now is like the reality is black people themselves don't want to see the black middle class on television because the black middle class, like the black middle family is worth $1,700. The problem is not just about positive imagery. It's about real re reality and reality putting you in a place where you understand what you need to ask for and where you, where you're at. Understand all the data I've shown you is before the great calcification of the last three years, three to five years. So it's worse now. This is the situation that we're in. Black wealth in this country is largely invisible. And I just wanted to lay that out for you just to kind of explain, because I get so many people that have answers that rely on the context of having a ticket into the game. The ticket into the game is in this country is about $100,000. Eighty-five to a hundred thousand dollars. That's just to get the top seat. Like if you're looking at it from like a, a sports analogy, that's to get in the top seats nosebleeds. A hundred thousand dollars in work for a family. That gets you out of the bottom fifty percent. We don't have a, 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 a large group. We don't have any young people that are that way, and we have a very negligible sample of of old people that are that way. I mean, when I say negligible, I'm talking about. Less than a, a, a one and a half million out of the 14 million households, two million that have that kind of like, like wealth. And like, I think for us, one of the dangers of this moment is we don't understand what undergirds a family, the kind of basic wealth that you need and why we, and then as a result, we don't move to the question of why we don't have that basic wealth, why we don't have 125, $150,000 and just nest egg just for, for, the basic stability of a family and we're living off of like poverty and in a sense making up a whole narrative that through this poverty we're going to see this great advancement and I just, I'm just here to say to you that that's not an adult way of living and we need to live like adults now and I, I, I you know I hate to be the harbinger I hate to bring to you such real news but if you're framing this as bad news at the end of this video that should tell you a lot of things that were about to change for your psyche under Trump's new budget and tax cuts. I did a video about the tax cuts. Go check that out. Uh, and, and it's going to be a lot of changes that he's proposing. I just wanted to do a short video just to kind of explain the reality of like black wealth across a, a whole like spectrum of like financial realities in America and give you a chance to see things laid out. There's 14 million black households. 12 million are in the bottom 50% of the country that owns less than 1% of the wealth. 